Hello everyone. My name is Viru Talreja and I'm a PhD candidate at West Virginia University uh, in Northern Town, West Virginia USA. And um, the work that I'm presenting today, the end to end deep learning for phase noise tropes, multi dimensional geometric shaping. This work I have done uh, during my internship at Mitsubishi Electric Research Lab, and my collaborators there were uh, Dr. Toshi, Dr. Ye Wang, Dr. David, Dr. David Miller, Dr. Kaisui Kajima, and Dr. Uh, Kiran Parsons. So, yeah, next, uh, let's go to outline. So, outline I'm going to talk about the deep learning trends and applications and some of the previous work, uh, deep learning work that has been done in optical communication and discuss about uh, face noise and optical communication and techniques uh, to mitigate face noise and improve capacity. And then uh, come to the proposed method, the end to end deep learning for face noise robust optical communication and end with performance analysis and summary. So, uh, coming to machine learning, like uh, there have been a lot of machine learning methods that most of us. Are aware of such as k-means, Gaussian mixture model, principal common analysis, etc., and also artificial neural networks and deep learning. And uh, as with uh, many other, you know, machine learning methods, uh, there has been a lot of uh, attention and interest uh, from the research community in deep learning. And this could attribute this re this attention, this development in deep learning could be attributed to basically uh, in you know availability of large computing power and also availability of large data sets which makes it easy and which makes it feasible to apply and implement these uh, big network big uh, models deep learning models so yeah so it has i mean the deep learning has developed so much that it has also surpassed human level performance in some of the specific applications such as chess or you know a go or the board game go uh, it was a landmark in 1997 uh, when in, in the computer computer program, the computer game, and the computer program Deep Blue had actually beaten the human cha chess champion Gary Kasparov. So that was a huge landmark. And also very similar was the AlphaGo, and AlphaGo beat the human champion Go uh, human uh, Go player. And uh, there have been other developments as well that have actually surpassed human level performance. And uh, very similar to, and when it comes to optical communication as well, uh, there have been a lot of developments. And uh, for example, when you look at the trends of, uh, you know, when you search for articles related to machine learning and optical communication uh, and deep learning optical communication on the on Google Scholar, this is the kind of plot you can, you know, you can actually create by looking at the number of papers and it has grown exponentially i mean here we actually have a new moore's law in such a way where the papers related to deep learning and uh, optical communication are growing exponentially and tripling every year and you know beyond 2020 tons of publications could appear every year so then coming to deep learning applications for optics i mean the the, the data driven approaches based on deep learning are are much better and have uh, find a wide uh, range of applications and optics when compared to the physical um to the model based approaches so some of the applications for optics are modulation classification link quality monitoring resource allocation end to end design signal detection nonlinear compensation etc and our focus here is on the end to end design so next uh, here uh, next we're going to discuss about uh, couple of uh, papers from previous from literature uh, that have used uh, deep learning for in optical communication so this is one of the papers that is neural turbo equalization deep learning for fiber optic nonlinear decompensation so i mean this paper is basically it is uh, designed to um, use deep learning for nonlinear decompensation and here they have designed a deep neural network based turbo equalizer uh, to basically take care of the non-linear impairments so here the the novelty here is that uh, and the difference from the conventional dn deep neural network being used in optical communication is that here along with the dp symbols uh, they have the, they've also used uh, the fec feedback llrs as input to the deep neural network so, and these fec feed, feedback llrs are nothing but the you know the intermediate soft llrs of uh, soft time llrs and then they have also used uh, this, uh, they have also had a outer skip connection uh, and fit this uh, a priori information to the, to, to, you know, to, to the, to generate the apostory information, apostory LLRs. And uh, they have also used uh, the, you know, the skip connections here, the residual net to basically smooth out uh, some of the extrinsic LLRs as well. So that is the 
one of the methods and then coming to the other papers that is based on uh, it's an end to end uh, deep learning or optical fiber communication so here uh, they have taken an end they have taken an optical communication system including the transmitter channel and receiver and designed as, as an end to end deep learning deep neural network and they have shown the benefits of uh, it by applying it to intensity modulation and direct, direct detection so next coming to the phase noise and optical communication i mean many of these end to end methods have uh, been used for awg in channel or linear model but uh, as i already said like uh, it is basically the optical communication is basically there are there are a lot of non linear impairments that could uh, you know that could be due to the laser line width carrier phase estimation error or non linear phase noise and this could lead to undesired phase noise as well so and as we all know the higher order qm is susceptible to phase noise so next uh, so next we'll try to look at methods that are used to mitigate this phase noise in optical communication so one of the methods is the high dimensional modulation so high dimensional modulation is basically like uh, it uh, it is one of the uh, one of the most important methods that has been used to mitigate the uh, mitigate phase noise and uh, not only that it helps to Uh, in noise tolerance but also it is useful for uh, you know for mitigating non linear distortion in the fiber lines and some of the methods that have been used uh, as high uh, for high dimensional modulation are four dimensional constant modulus modulation dimensional eight dimensional grassman modulation eight dimensional x constellation so next come to another technique is constellation shaping so constellation shaping basically meaning uh, hgm The designing high dimensional modulation corresponds to uh, geometric constellation shaping. So here, constellation. What is exactly constellation shaping? So basically, in uh, in optical communication, channel coding and constellation shaping are two key technologies that have been used to realize uh, that have been used to realize uh, sh- capacity. Appro- I mean, channel limit capacity approaching systems. Uh, so in constellation shaping, basically, like uh, in a QM format, the constellation points are placed on uh, equidistant are placed on uh, equid are placed at equidistant on a cartesian grid and sent with equal probabilities but with a geometric shaping but in a geometric shaping they are not uh, they they follow a non equidistant distribution and in a probabilistic shaping they are sent with uh, dissimilar probabilities they need not be sent with equal probability they are sent with uh, dissimilar probabilities so some of the methods for probabilistic shaping are uh, um, So the methods for probabilistic shaping are basically trellis, um, arithmetic coding, Huffman coding, and for uh, geometric shaping are irregular ring constellation, high dimension modulation, or and also end-to-end modulation in end-to-end uh, systems. So the end-to-end system that so that brings us to a proposed uh, model. That is that brings us to a pro- proposed um, method, which is an end-to-end deep learning method for. Bayesian robust uh, phase noise robust multidimensional geometric shaping. Uh, we propose a uh, we basically propose a scalable PN aware ETV design to optimize the high dimensional uh, modulation GS and geometric shaping. So many of these methods uh, that are being used, uh, end-to-end methods that have been used uh, normally use one-hot en- encoder, uh, but that actually reduces the practical application to smaller code length. And but in our method. so we are trying to design a system that is scalable to larger code lengths so instead of using a like one hot encoder we actually use the k bit vector the input as a as k bit vector so this actually helps us uh, to be scalable to larger code this method to be scalable to larger code lengths and also we use a uh, an embedding layer we also use an embedding layer a tail biting convolution embedding layer that helps that also helps us to make the system scale larger code lengths and also provide us efficiency in terms of making the system robust to phase noise so that is uh, that is a model i mean that is an introduction to a model and uh, so this basically in our model here we are basically integrating a tail by tail biting embedding layer convolution embedding layer with an auto encoder to create the whole end to end system that is phase noise robust and also scalable to large code lengths Next, come to the tail biting convolution embedding layer. The tail biting convolution embedding layer is the first, uh, is the first layer in a model. And uh, here, basically, the first step we do here is uh, tail biting. What we do here is we take the input, the k bits, and then we cyclically pad 
the tail of uh, m minus one bits uh, from the tail of the k bits and pair it to the head of the k bit vector. So basically, like for example, if k uh, if m is three here, then we cyclically pair m minus one so that is two and pair it on the head of the k bit vector. So now the resulting vector is k plus m minus one bits, and um, so this vector is again fed back to a convolution embedding layer. So this convolutional embedding layer is parameterized by a dictionary of to the power of m embedding vectors of length l. So here, this convolutional embedding layer maps each embed segment to an l bit vector, l bit embedding vector. And this uh, convolutional embedding layer is cyclically applied across all the k bits. Message with a stride of one. And uh, to generate uh, a, a embedding vector, the embedding vector of uh, size k by l, of size k by l. And for our experiments, we have used m equals to three and l equals to eight. So this is uh, next one to the whole model. Like this is our whole model. This is a complete deep learning model here. We have the tail body convolution embedding layer, and then we have the encoder, p n channel, and uh, the decoder. The encoder and decoder are pretty similar in the structure that we have, and the, both of them are feed forward MLPs, but uh, the difference lies actually in the sizes of the input layer, the hidden layer, and the output layer. And also at the output of the encoder, we also have uh, a power normalization layer. And we've used uh, binary cross entropy to train this uh, network. So the good part is that uh, the, the output of the DNA out, the DNA and output, the decoder output can directly be used for FEC, you know, for soft addition FEC deco instead of uh, using an extrinsic, instead of using an extrinsic uh, LL converter. So this is the whole model. Next, coming to performance analysis. Uh, so first of all, we look here, and this figure here shows us uh, the comparison of our model, of our end-to-end -end model with Polanski bound, and also BCH MLD. So here, uh, we look at uh, the, this plot is, bit, uh, is WER versus SNR here. And here we can see that the red plot, the end to end, our end to end model outperforms the BCH ML, which is the black uh, by 1 dB at uh, WER of 10 to the power of minus 3. And it also outperforms the Polinsky bound, which is considered to be a little loose at lower code lengths. And next, come to performance analysis of the uh, 15 by 7 E2E end to end. Uh, so again, here also, this is uh, here we see that uh, the, our model, the end to end model uh, given in red again. Uh, outperforms the BCH MLD, the maximum likelihood decoding for BCH codes, by it outperforms at all SNRs and also uh, it is very close to it approaches the Polnsky bound. So, here for the AW chain channel, we can clearly see that uh, there is a shaping game in using the our proposed method. On the previous two slides, we have uh, looked at the performance analysis of the end-to-end -end model for AWG in channel. But here we looked at, uh, in this slide, we look at the performance analysis of the end-to-end -end, uh, channel for uh, phase noise, end-to-end -end, um, model for the phase noise channel. So here on this uh, plot, we can see four curves, wherein uh, two curves, the black and blue correspond to the model, end-to-end -end model that has been trained at AWG. In. And the black one corresponds to where it has been tested at AWG and the blue one corresponds to when we introduce the phase noise and then test it. So here we can clearly see that there's a degradation from black to blue. And then we look at uh, the pink and the red curves. These are when uh, they, this correspond to model that has been trained by uh, for PN channel by with the phase noise channel of variance of 0 0.05. And here we can see that the, uh, we have tested it at uh, by introducing no phase noise by for AWG and that is shown by the pink and that is pretty close to black one. And then we have uh, the red plot that corresponds to where we have all tested the model at introducing the phase noise. And we can clearly see that from the blue one there is a 2 dB gain at WER of, of minus 3. So here we can clearly see that our system is robust to phase noise. And then coming to the summary, um, we have developed a DD deep learning based end to end model employing a convolutional embedding layer that is scalable to large arbitrary code length and it outperforms the best non linear codes and also achieves a 2 dB gain in terms of large phase noise. That'll be all. Thank you.